Good evening. It is uh, 7 o'clock, Tuesday evening, May 12th, 2020, and we are back in the Commission chambers for a socially distanced Commission meeting. We uh, had a couple historic virtual meetings, which we've never done before in the city of Ormond Beach, but uh, it's good to be back. Good to be back in person. I hope you felt welcomed uh, as we called the meeting to order this evening with our Deputy Fire Chief Tom Bazanos uh, and our police captain Chris Roos, who were assisting as our greeters this evening. Uh, I'd like to introduce the folks who are sitting up in front of you. Uh, to my right is Recording Secretary Cassidy Ritz. Uh, down in front is City Clerk Colby Salento. Uh, and then Commissioner Dwight Selby from Zone 1 in person, live. Our Deputy Mayor and Zone 2 Commissioner live and in person is Troy Kent. To my left and your right, Commissioner Susan Persis, Zone 3. At the end of the dais there, socially distanced in the City Attorney's normal seat is uh, Commissioner Rob Littleton from Zone 4. Down in front we have City Manager Joyce Shanahan and Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. And way to my right is City Attorney Randy Hayes. Uh, for those of you listening online, I'm Mayor Bill Partington. At this time, uh, we'd ask that you silence your cell phones and rise for the invocation given by Father Anderson from the Church of the Holy Child, and that'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Oh, Lord our God, these are troubling times indeed as we see this nation and indeed the whole world troubled with this thing that we call the coronavirus, COVID-19. And we thank you for the expertise of the medical communities and scientists and others who are straining to their utmost to solve the problem of how to deal with this plague. Lord, we call upon your name knowing that there is nothing too difficult for you. And we would be hypocrites indeed were we not to say, Lord God, we ask you to rise up, extend your scepter, and send forth your spirit, and drive this plague from the face of your creation. And Father, we ask that in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we ask that for this meeting this very night, that you be present in a very real and practical way for all present, those who are in positions uh, of leadership, those who are here to petition and make their positions known. Lord, let a spirit of, 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 of civility and cooperation permeate the entire environment here. And further, Lord, uh, lead all who must vote and decide to make wise decisions and to take right actions for the benefit and the comfort and well-being of all in these parts and most particularly the city of Ormond Beach. We thank you for your, for your generosity, for your patience. We now ask your provision. All in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you, Father Anderson. And uh, if if anyone would like their faith leader uh, to give the invocation, that is open uh, an open invitation. And you would just need to contact the clerk and let them know, and we can we can schedule that. So appreciate that. Did we have uh, any audience remarks, Colby? No. Good deal. And we will move on to approval of the minutes. The minutes have been sent to the commission for review and posted to the city's website. These are two sets of minutes, uh, 5A from the March 3rd, 2020 city commission meeting and 5B minutes from the special virtual city commission meeting of April 14th, 2020. Any additions, deletions or corrections? If I could get a motion to approve both move, at the same time. Move approval for both second. of the minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign and we'll show those passing unanimously. Thank you. Now on to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull any item from the consent agenda? Move approval of consent agenda. Second. Great. Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And that was a lot of work we just did right there. Any commissioner who would like to uh, comment on the consent agenda? Any particular item? Commissioner uh, Littleton. Yes, on item A, I just want to thank staff. We are saving uh, thousands of dollars on our new copier lease program. I just want to thank them for that, watching out for the citizens' uh, pocketbook. Awesome. Yep, Kelly does a great, a great job with that and her staff. And Joyce, thank you very much for that. Anyone else? If not, we'll move on to 7A, and I will open the public hearings and ask the clerk to read 7A by title, please. Ordinance number 2020-03, an ordinance amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan to clarify the city's annexation policies related to utility connections outside the city's municipal boundaries, providing for the transmission of copies of the notice and amendment to the state reviewing agencies, the County of Volusia, and any other local government or governmental agency requesting a copy, providing for public hearings, providing for conflicting ordinances, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2020-03, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. And uh, this is a second reading. I have uh, three individuals who would like to speak on this, and we'll start with Bill Barber. He's really socially distanced. <laughs> 7C. I'm a paid representative of the United States government. All of you paid me. You're still paying me. I'm charging the city of Ormond Beach with illegal activity resulting in a pattern and practice, I emphasize those words, of discrimination resulting in documented medical harm to a citizen outside your jurisdiction. I am that citizen. I am totally disabled. My severe disability is an extremely severe form of PTSD. I acquired it in service to my country. I, the, I made an initial charge of discrimination in Alfie's restaurant during the septic to sewer conversion. Commissioner Selby, I mean no disrespect to anyone. The, the, quaver, the quiver in my voice is a symptom, as is my tone. I wear this tie for you because that day I presented as a disabled veteran. You did not see the entire story. I am that story. I am not only a disabled veteran, I am a retired executive of the federal government. My, my government duties spent an awful lot of time in Washington, the ultimate funding authority. They were pretty high. I worked with congressional committees and administrations, saying no to members of Congress. Uh, I, I've got to pull out my visual aids. They're in this purse. The 
There's no weapon. I'm no danger to anyone. These are the prescriptions I was forced to take then, and unfortunately, I'm back on them because the situation was never remedied. I suffered additional injury over something you're all going to say, how in the world could that happen? It was the legal notice for this very meeting. North Peninsula, mention of sewers, and recall, because I have flashbacks, of the mayor saying a long time ago that there was some culpability over the annexation issue. I'm here to tell you there's some additional culpability and you're looking at it. Uh, pattern and practice is serious. A second charge is a second offense. The federal government, Attorney General Barr, ordered every prosecutor in the country to pay close attention to lower level government action Bill, during coronavirus. Mr. Barber, your time is up. Um, I would encourage you to continue in an email form to any or all of us. I don't, I don't write because I write books because okay. of my condition. All I'm asking for is a common sense solution. One city employee of your choice with a lot of common sense that can, that can literally hear everything I have to say and bring it back to you. Attorneys, I'm sorry. I battled, I battled a half a dozen at one time. I'm retired under a gag order. Understood. Well, we want to make it as convenient for you and um, non-confrontational for you as possible, and we'll figure out who that person is. I will uh, have the city manager give you a card and then we'll be in contact with you or you can contact us either way. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is Nancy. I want to say it's Smart Jess or Smart GC. Um, I'm just here to voice my opinion on the annexation. I live in Ormond by the sea, and I don't know about everybody else up there, but we don't care to be part of the Ormond Beach City. So I am against it. We like being in the county. I don't care about sewer. I know that's an issue. I don't think you guys have done the, the test yet to see if it's really what's causing the pollution in the river. Uh, once that's done, maybe I would change my mind. But at this time, I want it on record that I am not interested in being annexed into the city of Ormond, or Ormond Beach. Thank you, Nancy. Yep. And there is no annexation on the table at all tonight. Right. This essentially takes it off the table. And I can have the city attorney explain that if, if it would help comfort you. But this is not... This would be the opposite of annexation okay. that we're working that's, on tonight. Well, that's not real clear here in your... It is, I understand it, it comes across as a little bit of legal gobbledygook, but the yeah. point of it is to move the other direction, not move towards annexation. Okay, because, well, the way it says here, if you redesign it, that the city's going to want anybody in either side, either way you go, then to have your utilities and everything. Is that not correct? I don't think that's a correct understanding. That's Randy, could you just give us a... That's how it read in your public notice that you put in the paper. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, all we're trying to do is to clarify the city's long-standing historical policy that annexation in the North Penn is, n is not required That's as a condition correct. to hooking up to the city's um, water system. That's all we're trying to do. In the past, the policy has existed in um, various places, but not all under one, one umbrella that, that everybody could uh, easily go to to see it. So what we're trying to do is to bring it under that umbrella so that one day when we're no longer here, if there's ever an issue again in 10 or 15 or 20 years, whoever follows in our footsteps will understand what the long historical policy has been. So this is definitely nothing about annexing um, the North Penn properties. Um, we're simply trying to clarify the policy that annexation is not and will not be required without your voluntary consent. Um, 
um, you know, in order to get the city water. So you're not being annexed at all. Okay, that's not really how it read in your public notice that you put. Yeah, we're, we're limited in the caption, um, the legal jargon, uh, in terms of, um, you know, what we can say. You have to read the full text of the document, which is pretty voluminous. I'll be happy to spend more time and share that with you. If you want to give me a call or just send me an email, I'll, I'll be happy to give you as much time as you need. Okay. Okay. As long as you understand my feelings. Yes, ma'am. We I do. do. Thank you, Nancy. And, uh, you. Commission, thank you for your indulgence. I felt it was important at least that we explain that while we had the opportunity, um, just so we're as clear as possible. Next up, I have Charlie, and I think it's, is it, how do you pronounce it? I'm sorry. It's Smart Jesse. My parents say it's Italian, but everybody who knows me and gets to know me swears it must be Polish. Smart, <laughs> smart Jesse. Yes. Got it. You can put that in the record. <laughs> okay. I think what we have here is a failure to communicate, and I'm not trying to be funny at all. I really do. My wife and I raised two boys. We moved into a home in Ormond by the Sea 33 years ago. I just turned 21, and I thought I knew everything, but I didn't. Now those two boys are both Eagle Scouts. They never call for help. They call and ask us if we need help. Nice. Um, I'm proud to live in this community and I wanna to continue to be proud to live in this community. And I think what, when, because we're simple, keep it simple people. We've done so much with so little for so long, now we can do anything with nothing. If you saw my house, you'd agree. It's paid for, our cars are paid for, we don't owe credit card debt, we are very old school. All we ask for is, isn't just transparency, but um, in, in worded in a, in a layman's terms to where if you read the thing and I have it on my phone, but I, I followed proper protocol um, because proper prior planning does prevent painfully poor performance. <laughs> and I am big on poor uh, and you know, good form. And that's what I want is good form from all of us, citizenry, and our leadership, because we're all just passing through. And the best thing, I'm with Dwight Sepp, the best thing we can do is leave this place better for the people who follow us, because we're all gonna be dead one day. It's just how we leave this place and what we've done to this place while we're here. And all I ask is just, because I didn't understand what I saw in the paper, and I called around to several agencies, the city, the county, and um, because of my ignorance, and I'm almost done, it's kind of like the movie Jaws. You don't see the shark that often, but in your imagination, it makes it that much scarier because you're thinking the worst. And when you call agencies and you're not quite, um, you know, you're already in a, you know, in a, in a ignorant, a state of ignorance where you don't know. Ignorance doesn't mean you're stupid. It means you just don't know. And all I'd like to, is to know, you know, so we can start saving or, you know, where we are with these, because I'm with you, sir. I believe that the bridges slowed down the flow of the river, allowed the oyster beds to take hold, and I also believe these septic tanks cannot be good for our estuaries and our bio, you know, diversity, and that's what our natural resource, you know. I'll leave you with this. We're in the sunshine state, and one thing that scientists say about this corona and COVID is the sunshine kills it. We should use that as a natural resource and sell it. Amen. If you want to get back to me, you know where I'm at. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I mean that too sincerely. Thank you. I came here kind of upset, but when I heard the God man speak, and I do believe in God, and I'm trying to, I'm almost shaken. I'm trying to get there. I really am trying to live my life like I'm trying to get to heaven. So let's leave this place better for the next generation. Right. Thank you. If there's anything Thank I can you. do, I'll donate or work for free. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. The only other uh, comments on 7A I had were from Jeffrey... Andre, 37 Longfellow Circle, Foreman by the Sea, and uh, he supports language that clarifies a land or homeowner does not have to annex to the city for any reason without a public vote, and supports language changes that clarify the existing spirit of annexation. Oppo he's opposed to any discussion or change to being required or mandated to connect to any city service and he sent that in regarding 7a 7b and 7c so we'll make that part of the record um very good that's all the uh i don't have cards that's all the sign up sheet speakers that i have so at this time 
We'll entertain a motion in a second. I move approval of ordinance number 2020-03. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And with that, we move on to 7B. Ordinance number 2020-06, an ordinance amending Chapter 3, Performance Standards, Article 5, Utility and Infrastructure Design Standards, Section 3-61, Utility Line Extensions of the City of Ormond Beach Land Development Code to clarify the city's annexation policies related to utility connections outside of the city's municipal boundaries, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for severability and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2020-06, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. And I don't have any uh, speakers. Move approval. Great. Second. Any other discussion? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Commissioner Selby? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And 7C? Ordinance number 2020-07, an ordinance amending section 22-48, information, approval prerequisite to service of Division 3, North Peninsula Water District of Article 1, Water, of Chapter 2, 22, Water and Sewers of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Ormond Beach, clarifying that neither annexation nor an annexation agreement are required as a condition to receiving potable water service from the city, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2020-07, read by title only. Thank you. Uh, again, no additional speakers. Move approval of ordinance number 2020-07. Second. Any discussion? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Commissioner Selby? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And that brings us to 7D. Ordinance number 2020-16, an ordinance annexing certain real property into the city of Ormond Beach, said properties consisting of approximately 0.44 plus or minus acres and being generally located along the east side of Plantation Oaks Boulevard, south of Plantation Oaks Boulevard, west of Old Dixie Highway, and north of the Village of Pine Run subdivision, and portions of Hammond Street, Indiana Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue, and a 15-foot alleyway consisting of approximately 2.64 plus or minus acres, setting forth zoning privileges and obligations regarding the properties, redefining the territorial boundaries of the city of Ormond Beach to include the properties, redesignating the boundaries of zone one of the city of Ormond Beach to include the properties, providing for transmission, providing for severability, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2020-16, read by title only. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any cards. Did we want planning director Stephen to speak on this one? Or is everybody comfortable with? I didn't think so. I mean, it was kind of a, it was just a mop up from. No, not not required, but certainly we can have one if you prefer one. Move approval. <laughs> Second. Second. Great. I love the fact that you guys are prepared. Uh, moved, seconded. Any discussion? My understanding that it was just a mop up from the previous annexation that we had done. There were just a couple streets or 0.44 acres that, uh, or 2.64 acres that needed to be made sure to be included and so now they will be and this is the first reading of 7d anyone else any questions or concerns good deal uh colby please call the vote commissioner selby yes commissioner kent yes commissioner persis yes commissioner littleton yes mayor partington yes and 7e ordinance number 2020-17 an ordinance annexing two parcels of real property into the city of ormond beach said properties being generally located along the west side of north timber creek road approximately 765 linear feet north of the intersection of west granada boulevard and north timber creek road being commonly located at 36 north timber creek road Parcel ID number 4125-00-00-0221 and a stormwater pond along Timber Creek Road with no address. Parcel ID number 4215-00-00-0223, including that portion of North Timber Creek right-of-way abutting the property to West Granada Boulevard, setting forth zoning privileges and obligations regarding the properties, redefining the territorial boundaries of the city of Ormond Beach to include the properties, redesignating the boundaries of zone three of the city of Ormond Beach to include the properties, providing for transmission, providing for severability, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2020-17, read by title only. 
Thank you, Colby. And um, Stephen, I will ask you just to give a brief synopsis of this one. Good evening, Stephen Spraker, uh, plan director. So this is an annexation request for 36 Timber Creek Road, which is shown in this hatch pattern here. Um, when we notified Volusia County that we intended to annex that property, um, they suggested that we also annex the stormwater pond that they created with the expansion of Timber Creek <coughs> and the Timber Creek right away. As part of that annexation, the city will not take over maintenance, so Volusia County still maintains the stormwater pond, but it cleans up that area and it brings all of that area into the city. Um, there is a pending development that includes this property with a portion of the larger 25-acre um, parcel for multifamily on the northern section and then commercial on the front section. There is no commercial identified at this time, but the multifamily is working its way through the process. <coughs> They'll have a neighborhood meeting. It'll come to before the planning board and city commission. So the first step is annexation, which they are seeking tonight. Um, staff is recommending approval. And if there are any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? Stephen, is the ownership of the corner piece the same as this uh, strip that we're annexing? Correct. I believe they're two separate um, corporations, but they are the same owner. Okay. Thank you. And the uh, thank you, Stephen. Anything else for Stephen at, at this time? The applicant is here as well as the applicant's attorney, um, if needed. I mean, uh, it's nice to see another human being in these times, so. It's nice to see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see anybody outside my house. <laughs> That's right. And Richard's back there too, Mr. Jaffe. Um, Jaffe's here too. Yep, good to see you. Yep. Anybody have questions for either the applicant or his attorney? All right. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And with that, we will close the public hearings. Thank you and move to 8A. Ordinance number 2020-19, an ordinance regarding the Office of Mayor and City Commissioners for Zone 1 through 4 by providing for and calling a primary municipal election of the registered electors of the City of Ormond Beach to be held on August 18th, 2020, providing for and calling a regular municipal election of the registered elect electors residing in the city of Ormond Beach to be held on November 3rd, 2020, providing for qualifying and election procedures, establishing a date for taking office, authorizing the execution of a memorandum of understanding for services and materials with the County of Volusia, providing for severability and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2020-19, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. I don't have any cards. Move, Move for approval. approval. Second. <laughs> Had two first motions and a second. I don't know how you want to score that, Colby, but I think we're well okay. covered. Any discussion? <laughs> Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Commissioner Selby? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And with that, we move to 9A discussion items starting with the Independence Day celebration. And Joyce, do you want to start with yourself? Okay, I don't know if Robert took off. He was right, he was just somewhere. Okay, he's around. Yeah. You can go here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think this is working. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Robert can give you some detail about this. As you know, we normally hold our uh, fireworks on the 4th of July celebration. Um, at the time we wrote this uh, email, I mean this staff report, the um, governor had not yet extended his um, declaration of emergency. He has extended that through um, July 7th. And after talking with Randy um, yesterday or today, um, he, the city attorney indicated that he's not sure if we're currently still under the declaration of emergency, if we would even be allowed to hold the fireworks because there's that social distancing requirement. Is that correct, Randy? That, yes, that's, that's correct. So, um, so you might have to take that option off the table. You know, I think we gave you three um, 
move the event to the later date, limit size and duration. I'm not sure we can do that on that event or cancel the event. We're happy to answer any questions you have. Um, this is, you know, one of the most favorite days that we have in Ormond Beach. Everybody loves the 4th of July celebration. Um, we would hate to, to move it. I know our sister cities are struggling with the same issue. And can you speak to the contract a little bit about when we have to notify them? Yeah, yeah the contractor um, sent us a letter, um, I don't know, uh, sometime in the middle of last week. And they essentially said by May 22nd they would need to know an answer one way or the other so they could prepare to uh, 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 get the barge that we shoot off of, which is a little unique to some other communities. So um, they need that, that uh, lead way to be able to secure that barge. Um, so that's, they basically asked us if we could please make a decision tonight on that, um, either delay or hope for the best and move forward. And if I can jump in on that conversation very, very quickly. Um, our, the legal group um, met through the teleconference yesterday, it's a group of uh, city and county attorneys, uh, and we've been meeting uh, regularly during uh, this COVID uh, period, and it's actually um, helped foster very good relations between all of us. And we discuss issues of common interest for consistency and coordination. This issue actually came up yesterday, and um, I don't recall who in the group brought it up, uh, but um, there was not a definitive um, Hard yes, yes, we can, you know, should should proceed to have these um, these um, Fourth of J July displays or or not. Um, there was a question as to. Um, I don't think it's absolutely prohibited, except for the fact that uh, there's a question as to whether we would have to implement the safe distancing requirements and how we would do that. And so that's that's an interesting um, dilemma that we all face. Um, I told the group that we were actually, you, you folks were going to discuss it tomorrow evening. And they said, great, we'll see what Ormond's going to do and, <laughs> and then we'll figure out what we're going to do from that. So we're kind of first on the list again <laughs> on a lot of things. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, it adds an interesting uh, legal wrinkle with the governor's order still being in place through July 7th, is it? My inclination, and obviously we're here to talk about it and you can talk me out of it, I hate to cancel it outright, but I'd like maybe to move it to a Labor Day, 4th of July celebration, if there's something like that, but see what everybody else thinks. It is one of the greatest things that we do. I'd hate to just cancel it outright, but I wanna have it at a time when people are thoroughly comfortable coming out and we know that we'll have good, safe participation. That's after a lot of thought, that's where I've landed, but I'm still open to suggestions. So, sure. Deputy Mayor Kent. Thank you. I, um, I don't use this term often, but I absolutely hate the idea of not having our 4th of July celebration for our residents. I loathe it. I disgust it. Um, our residents deserve the party and show that Ormond Beach puts on every year. That being said, um, I... I'm looking at the calendar. I mean, 4th of July was falling on a Saturday this year. You know, the governor's orders until the 7th, I think you said. So, I mean, we've got July 11th, 18th, 25th. We have a lot of Saturdays there that we could do. Um, unless we were just saying, no, we're, we're going to hold off until Labor Day and, and do that in September. So I, I actually could, could be swayed to, or kind of lead the charge, I guess, to, to do it sooner than Labor Day on a Saturday, um, give our residents plenty of notice as to when that's going to happen, um, unless we just think that um, it's, it's too risky to do it that close to the 4th, that it could be continued again. And in that case, I guess, you know, as far as we, we've been dealing with, is it Santori? We've been dealing with them since I was a wee wee little boy living in this city. Uh, they've done the contract for the fireworks and they do a, an incredible job. Um, so if we were to choose another date and the, and the order was extended, have you all had a conversation with them um, yep. about, about them us being able to use the fireworks at an, another later date, like we're paying for them, so, you know. Yeah, ab absolutely we have. Um, we we chose Labor Day on our own basically because it was sure. a holiday, obviously. Um, 
but uh, Santori, there are a lot of other book dates already being taken up by other cities. So uh, Labor Day, we sort of secured tentatively with Santori. Right. We can certainly have a more broader conversation to see if there's other uh, weekends available based on whether the governor decides to lift some of those uh, those orders as long as we have the uh, barge availability. Sure. But I think as of today, Santori's committed to us without question for Labor Day tentatively based on your decision here tonight. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, I, I'm definitely for, for not canceling this outright. We have the celebration. I guess we need to just get our heads together tonight and decide what we think would be the best time to do that. And if it's Labor Day, it's, it's Labor Day. Uh, but I'm, I'm sort of thinking we could have a great party before Labor Day and then have another great party on Labor Day. Um, but that's, that's right. I mean, as far as Orman going first, I love that we're the leaders in this, Randy. Uh, you know, I think that we'll make a, a great decision for, for our residents, and I'm sure others will, will follow the lead. Yeah. Can I offer one more tidbit of information? For sure. You? And, and, of course, the great unknown is what the governor <clears throat> uh, may or may not do after uh, um, July 7th. Um, by statute, he's limited to 60-day um, time periods for the declarations. Um, he could let it expire. He could extend it for a shorter period. He could extend it for another 60 days. It's just hard, hard to know. If he did extend it for six, another 60 days, that would put it on like September 7th. Um, but you really don't know. Nobody really knows what he may do. Um, so I just wanted to offer that timeline out there for your discussion purposes. Thank you, Randy. And Robert, is it for the actual Labor Day, or is it for Labor Day weekend, do you know? Uh, we, we chose Labor Day weekend, so it would be that Saturday. The 5th. Okay. And that's probably, I'm sure that's somewhat flexible. No different than there may be also a, an earlier Saturday based on the governor's decision and the, the ability to secure the barge. But we can have that discussion with them if you'd like. Okay. And that is, I would think, the next most patriotic, or one of the, the next in line most patriotic holidays. But... Commissioner Persis. I just, um, I, ha I have given this a lot of thought and, and I agree with um, the mayor and Deputy Mayor Kent that I, I hate to take it away from our residents. I know we can't have it on the 4th now because of what our attorney has told us that so that looks like it's going to be out because he has not lifted his order. Um, kind of went through my mind. Um, I, I think Labor Day would be great, except that's like football season starting and a lot of people leave and aren't here. And that's a big Saturday for football if as long as we're still having football. I, and I hope we are. But I kind of went through my head thinking instead of July 4th, what about July 24th? You know, you could kind of make a ring on it like, you know, we can't do it on the 4th, but we're saved the 24th and it would be, you know, close to August and maybe that we could do it then and just make another celebration kind of we made it this far and just kind of celebrate the fourth and celebrate lots of uh, great things in the city people getting back on their feet and maybe restaurants opening and, and so forth that's just an idea I was thinking of um, but again I, I think um, Labor Day Labor Day if we have to do it then I just don't know how many people would be here because I think a lot of people are planning on traveling then good deal uh, can I ask staff, do we have anything for Labor Day down at the casements? Like, am I, is there something in my, n no? Okay, so, so no one's already using it. <clears throat> okay, um, I came in here thinking that uh, there'd be a lot of pressure on governments to maybe cancel or move. Um, when I first came in here, given with what the governor's order was uh, when I was made aware of it, my thought was to have it on the fireworks even the, by themselves on July 4th, and we'd probably be the only ones that have it, and it'd be sort of special. Um, I'm not against moving it. Um, Labor Day, if it's open at the casements, seems okay. I, I really wouldn't want to wait that long, but it's plausible. I mean, you know, if that's what's decided, well, I guess we'll have to do it, but I'm sort of for having fireworks on July 4th and us not having, you know, shutting down the casements to make sure we're social distancing and not putting staff through that mess. But uh, that's what I think. 
Good points. The that, contrarian. No, that good points. That makes me worry about if we're the only one in Central Florida on that day with people driving an hour, hour and a half That's from all saying. around the region to mm -hmm. jam into Ormond Beach. There's certainly no socially distancing going on there. Um, Commissioner Selby. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think we, <clears throat> I think we have to postpone. Um, and I say that because I think that those who are vo most vulnerable uh, can't really enjoy the celebration when there's a big crowd of people. So, you know, we, I think we owe it to them to postpone. So then it really just becomes, and obviously I'm not interested in canceling it altogether. I mean, that's, that's would not be acceptable. Um, so then it just becomes, uh, you know, what's the appropriate date? And uh, one question I had was when, when do, when have Volusia schools, are they definitely going to go in in the fall? So far, it's looking that way, so far. What, what do you say? I, I have no idea. <laughs> There's okay. no talk that they aren't. I will tell you that. Okay, all right. And if they were to go in, is that generally about August 10th or something like that? It would like be that? like, yeah, the 12th, 15th, something like that. Okay, all right. That's sort of what I thought. All right, well, he, so here's my thought. Um, I, 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 I think I would be inclined to um, move the event to Labor Day also and call it an independent celebration on Labor Day. And um, I think that's far enough into the future that – it's not going to run into an extension of the, govern the governor's order, which would force us into a scramble to push it back again or, you know, change the dates. So I, 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 I think we would be safe with Labor Day. It's a holiday weekend anyway. People have Monday off. Um, it'll be after kids, obviously, kids get back into school. There was a time when school didn't start until after Labor Day. Good old days, okay. Don't look at me. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, so that that would be that would be my preference, and I think by then I know we I know there is some discussion about a resurgence of the uh, disease in the fall, but I I I don't I'm not that concerned about that, and I think this would give us ample time to plan. Uh, I do sort of like the Saturday night idea. Um, make a nice long weekend out of it. So that's my thoughts. And the uh, one thing I forgot to ask each of you was the additional uh, few, grand. few minutes, if anybody had an issue with that. The what? Additional few minutes of fireworks. I think it was $7,000 for a few extra minutes just to make it uh, a grander celebration was the idea after having been through, through this historic uh, event. Just pumping it up a little bit, but if I'll go down the line and then we'll, we'll all go down one more time, but Commissioner Selby, if you could let us know your thoughts on that. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm for that. Okay. Deputy Mayor Kent. Yes. Um, let me just really quickly pull up the calendar again. So September 5th would be that Saturday, Commissioner Selby, and I agree on the Saturday, um, Labor Day weekend. It would would probably be the best choice and the extra five minutes for the finale uh the extra money i am in agreement for that as well good deal commissioner purses yes i'm in agreement for the for the extra money for a few extra minutes and i just want to um i think with the it's going to be a big crowd um when we have it and i don't know what the governor's orders will be then but you know um what gets monitored uh, you know gets done and if it if 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 the social distancing rules are still out there some way, shape, or form, my only concern is how are you going to manage it because it's, it's, it would be really hard. So that's, that's my, that would be my only concern, and we just really would have to really think about, you know, what to do. But I'm all for it. That's great. I don't love, I don't love the Labor Day. I wish we could do it earlier for the people, but that's fine. I'm okay with the extra minutes, yes. Okay. And you were okay with the extra minutes as well? Yes. Great. So... You've got plenty of time, hopefully, to plan. Hopefully, that gives you plenty of time. And uh, I like Commissioner Selby's idea about an independent Independence Day celebration, or maybe you can work on the the wording of that. But um, that'll be that'll well. Actually, be great. celebrating labor would be a pretty nice thing, you know, getting everybody back to work. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's right. Yeah, finally, it may be the um, biggest Labor Day ever. And so now we 
move to report suggestions and requests and start with City Manager Joy Shanahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to give you a COVID-19 update. As you know, uh, phase two, the governor said, will begin when he determines it's suitable to continue reopening after carefully considering medical data. Um, there are no specific metrics for that, but we anticipate that to be within about two weeks of phase one, so we're hoping it's right around the corner. Um, he had initially said that hair salons and barber shops, as well as nail salons were originally slated for phase two, but he's moved that up. Uh, bars, pubs, and nightclubs um, will likely be a phase two, and hopefully restaurants and gyms will go, gyms will open and restaurants will go to 75%. So we're hopeful about that. I did want to let you know that uh, the Department of Health has reached out to us, the Florida Department of Health, and they're going to be doing a COVID-19 testing um, at the Performing Arts Center. Um, it's the nasal swab test. I think it's beginning next Monday through Saturday. Um, so it's the, excuse me, the 18th. So it's the one that's like the really uncomfortable one. So right. I want to make sure that everybody knows that. Will the, um, nicer, will the nicer test be coming eventually or? Uh, not at this time for us. Okay. I mean, this is, you know, what they've offered us. So okay. we took advantage of it. Um, so there'll be, we, the, pub, the leisure services has worked out the uh, traffic pattern and flow. Um, and we think we can stack enough cars without having to uh, in, impair any any roadways so they will begin next monday through saturday is that right next monday through saturday it's the nasal swab it takes five to seven days for that to come back so it's not the instant test so that's one thing that we're doing um, over the last uh, six weeks we've had um, about 20 employees tested all of those came back negative so we're really happy about that police and fire both have zero um, employees that tested positive um, they're going to remain on their uh, special shifts through the end of the month and return to special to regular duty on uh, June 1st. They just want to um, they just want to be extra cautious as far as that's concerned. Um, as I've been telling you before and through emails, the uh, fire department is closely monitoring the nursing home facilities in Ormond Beach. Um, Coquina currently has no positive cases at that facility. All positive residents have been transferred for a higher level of care. Um, we're waiting on the test results for one other facility in Ormond. Um, and the total number of staff and residents that were tested, we don't know about that yet. So we're, we're waiting on that. Uh, all of our city facilities are pretty much getting back to normal. All of our telecommuters have returned this week. Um, utilities, uh, water and sewer will fo follow the police schedule and they'll be back to full operations on July and June 1st because we have to have those licensed operators for the water and the wastewater treatment plant and we don't have backups to those people. So we need to make sure that um, we have them on split shifts so that they are not cross-contaminating, so we feel comfortable about that. Um, your next meeting is May 26th, and you have a meeting on June 9th and June 23rd. Um, I do uh, want to uh, talk with you um, about a workshop to discuss the Avalon Park issue. Um, so at our next meeting, I'll offer some dates for you to consider for that. Um, and that's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for yeah, Joyce? I, Commissioner I, Selby. I have a question for you, Joyce, and I don't, I don't know if you know the answer to this or not, but does Ormond Beach have a, uh, like a higher number of nursing homes or nursing home beds than other communities? Is there any, I mean, the, the list that I've seen of nursing homes didn't put the cities by them, so I wasn't able to, you know, yeah. do anything like that. I'm just curious, do you, do you know, I mean. I don't know specifically, but I would guess that South Florida has a much higher number of facilities than we do. Um, if you've been following the test results, we had one particular facility that right. had a predominant number of positive cases. Um, they struggled with the PP uh, protective equipment initially. Um, Fire staff went in there. They gave them <coughs> personal protective equipment. 
Uh, we worked with the health department. They brought the strike team in. I think you've heard the governor talk about the National Guard doing testing. They struggled with um, being able to separate the positive from the asymptomatic positive and negative folks. So I think that's why we've had a disproportionate number of uh, folks in Ormond Beach uh, affected. But I really can't speak to the number of nursing homes. I, right. I think it's probably far less than some other communities. Well, I didn't really mean, so, I, I really meant like in Volusia County, other cities in Volusia County, but. I, I just don't I'm know just, the answer. I'm that. just curious. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I have one thing. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Shanahan, the county uh, was doing something with a business, uh, uh, I guess, grant for COVID-19. Can you say, tell us when that start date happens and what the city's function is going to be? Uh, thank you. So today at the Volusia County Council meeting, they approved their small business grant program. It's for um, businesses that have a bricks and mortar store business in Volusia County, not a home-based business. You have to have been in business um, in December of 2019. You have to have less than 25 employees. You cannot have received any other kind of grant um, assistance or uh, insurance to cover your uh, loss of revenue during that period of time. And they are going to go live with their applications on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. So we have been pushing out information to the Chamber of Commerce and Main Street. You're required to show your uh, Volusia County uh, business license. You're required to also show your Ormond Beach business license if you're in an incorporated area of of the county and I would venture to say a predominant number of those businesses are already located within the city. Um, the county has asked the cities to verify that they're a bricks and mortar store and that they have a, a business tax receipt. Um, so they, the uh, applicant will fill out that information online, upload that, those documents, they will shoot it to the city we will verify that and send it back to the county. They have $10 million set aside, um, and I think they said that they had something like 12,000 small businesses. Brown's out here. Um, they had something like, maybe it was 25,000 small businesses in Volusia County, so that money's not gonna go very far. Um, and that's why we've been encouraging our residents to, and businesses to get their paperwork together. So that's kind of a summary of, of their program. Thank you. I, I don't know why they're involving cities. Maybe that's the way that they feel like we're involved, but I just don't know why they've asked us to participate at that level. Understood. Uh, yeah, just you, you mentioned one criteria that I hadn't heard before, which was that the business can't have received uh, any other support. Would that include the payroll protection, the PPP yes. or the EIDL? So yes. if you've gotten either of those or one of those, then you're not eligible? That's my understanding. Okay. Well, that's good because those are probably some of the people that are, if you haven't gotten those, you're, you're hurting. Right. You know, yeah. they want to reach those people that haven't gotten any mm -hmm. assistance at right. all. Right. Okay. That's good. Anything else on the business grant program? Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Um, Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. Thank you. And City Attorney Randy Hayes. No, sir. Thank you. And tonight we start, thank you, Randy, with Commissioner Persis. Oh, oh. oh, that's great. I'm glad I get to go first. Good evening, everyone. And I just want to tell everybody up here and everybody in the audience and out there, I'm just happy to see everybody in person and everybody looks healthy and well. And I just hope uh, we all stay that way. And pretty soon we won't have to be wearing masks and you people won't have to be sitting way out there. I, I kind of feel like I want to bring you in <laughs> but uh, but I'm just really happy to see everybody really uh, it's, it seems like it's been a long time um, I also just want to thank you know city staff and everyone for just everything you're doing it's just incredible you know Ormond Beach continues just to do everything just right and I'm just really really proud of everyone's actions and every everything everyone's been doing to keep us running just efficiently um, and just perfectly I think 
And I also want to thank um, Captain Roos and Chief Godfrey. They're both here. Um, they helped me out on a couple of situations, um, very minor situations. But, you know, as soon as I call, they are there and they are able to help. And it's just wonderful to know that. And I think it, the residents know that, too. And it's just a wonderful thing, thing that you all do. So thank you so much. And um, finally, I just want to say um, I haven't had my second Panera with Persis um, meeting because of the COVID-19. And I think I'm going to hold off and maybe, you know, next week announce something. I just I think it's just a little bit too early to get a, have a large gathering. So but I will be doing it, you know, hopefully within two weeks to four weeks. So thank you, everyone. It's so good to see you. Good night. Thank you, <clears throat> Commissioner Persis and Commissioner Littleton. Thank you, Mayor. I have no comments tonight. Thank you, Commissioner. And Commissioner Selby. Wow, Rob, that's <laughs> really. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, just uh, three quick comments. Uh, number one, I wanted to thank um, City Engineer uh, Sean Finley and City Manager uh, Joy Shanahan and, and Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley for a, uh, a nice update on our uh, reclaimed water system. Uh, in Ormond Beach uh, the other day it was at following my uh, update on the budget and um, I the, the two the two takeaways for me are um, uh, that I that I see long term is meters individual meters on the reuse customers because um, uh, just so that we can um, um, so that we know who's using how much and I think that's uh, that's one of the issues. The other one is storage. We uh, because we get um, so much rainfall in six months and almost none in the other six months uh, that really to get to a point where we're not dumping any of our uh, effluent into the river, we've got to be able to store that uh, extra effluent in the um, in the rainy season. Um, and uh, those are big, both big projects, and obviously big always means expensive. Um, and then I wanted to say that I was really glad to see the Andy Romano uh, Park parking lot 100% open uh, and virtually full uh, the other day when I drove by there. Um, I think that's great. I think people using the beach and, and uh, being in the sunshine is a really good thing. And uh, finally, I, um, I've, got, I've had a couple of uh, residents approach me about the airport ball fields and getting them open. And I would really strongly encourage us to uh, encourage staff or whoever's decision that is, I would like to see them open. Um, I know we, I think we have a rule of 10 or fewer people, you know, in, a, in any group. And um, I think that would, for the most part, rule out the, the teams that would be practicing, but just allow our residents to go back out to the airport uh, ball fields and utilize those uh, spaces. And with that, I'll say good night. Thank you, Commissioner Selby and Deputy Mayor Kent. Thank you. It has, um, I had one item and it's turned into three items. Thanks, Commissioner Selby, for bringing up a couple of things that I can add, add on to today. But I, too, had a, um, like I'm sure all of you did, had a, a meeting with Ms. Shanahan and staff about the reuse, and I'm I'm thinking differently than Commissioner Selby is about this. Um, it's going to be take over a million dollars to put a meter on everybody's home that has reuse, but we're not going to charge them anymore if they go over. This is just a way to um, see if you're if you're using too much water. Does anybody believe that? Does anybody believe we're going to spend a million dollars on meters? so that we can just see if you're using too much so we can go and knock on your door and tell you, hey, you're using a little bit too much. That's not how that was laid out to people. And what I love about our staff is they're problem solvers. And with the plan I heard, it's going from three days a week of reuse for everybody down to two days a week with limited hours and that will allow us to capture and keep our reuse so that you have it when, you, when it's your day, when you're supposed to be using it. You will have reuse there to use. That was funny saying that. But you will. And if that's the case, then I too would love to have more storage. But if that, if, if that is the case that we're able by planning better, and utilizing what we have better 
then we don't have to spend millions upon millions of dollars on more storage, and we don't have to spend over a million dollars to see how much water everybody's using when we're not going to charge them for the extra water. So that's where I am on, on that piece. Uh, but maybe something we all, you know, collect collectively talk about down the road. Now, a little bit lighter news I wanted to share. This is really what I wanted to share. And it also deals with Andy Romano Park. Was that today I went and picked up some lunch for my son Wyatt and myself. And uh, I, he stayed in the car, and I picked it up, and we went past our street, and he said, Dad, you missed our street. And I said, I did. We are going to have a picnic. And we went to Andy Romano Park, and I didn't think I was going to get a parking spot. But I did. And we were the only people sitting at a picnic table. And it was spectacular. And he looked at me and said, Dad, this is really nice. And I said, not only is it nice, but the weather is beautiful, my sandwich tastes great, and my son is beautiful. And his response was, the weather is beautiful, my sandwich tastes great, and my dad is beautiful. It was a great moment today during this COVID-19 um, dilemma uh, conundrum that we're in. It was, it was spectacular. And the other thing I wanted to share is something that you you may not know and you know you don't know it until someone tells you about it but i want to talk about our city manager and tonight i want to talk about our chief of police chief godfrey and i want to talk about officer greg gregory stokes so at ormond beach middle school we have uh, roughly a thousand seventy students on that campus and and commission of that number of students we had 18 that we could not get a hold of. They wouldn't answer. Phone calls, emails weren't working. We had no idea how they were. Um, and we wanted to, to reach out to them, have contact with them, let them know that we're there to assist and we're there to help. And we were brainstorming at school of things that we could do. And one of the ideas was to have our school resource officer, Gregory Stokes, go to those 18 homes, knock on the door, do a well-being check, and hand deliver a packet that we created at our school along with another packet that we created at school of school supplies that they probably needed in order to be working on their packet. And I called Ms. Shanahan and I wasn't finished with my thought yet and she said yes. And she called the chief of police and, and our Captain Roos, both of them, they said yes. And Officer Stokes was going to be off for a day or two, and we decided we didn't want any other Ormond officer to deliver those goods. It needed to be Gregory Stokes because that's who the kids know. And Officer Stokes came to our school multiple days, and he was hunting down students um, in homes and in motels, and he went above and beyond the call of duty because he is a fine human being. And Joyce Shanahan and Chief Godry are fine human beings, and they want to do what's right by, by people. And they did that. And Commission, I, I just wanted to share that. I told you I had one thing I wanted to share. That was my one thing. I wanted you to know something that was happening in this city that you probably didn't know was happening. And uh, it's a great partnership. It's a, it's a great community feel. And it makes me extremely proud to be a representative of the people of Ormond Beach because of the fine people that we have that truly care about the well-being of others. So with that, before I say goodnight, I will say a heartfelt thank you, Joyce Shanahan. A heartfelt thank you, Chief Godfrey. And Gregory Stokes, a heartfelt thank you to you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And uh, I'll start tonight with just explaining how uh, excellent, top-notch, fantastic 
uh, all of our staff has been during this event and continues to be. Uh, there's not enough adjectives to really cover everything, but whether it was police, fire, public works, our administrative staff, uh, legal department, each, each individual has been working very hard from unusual places, whether it was home or, or other places, and uh, doing a great job serving our residents. I never uh, once had a doubt or concern or question that we would make it through this event with, with any issues just because of the fantastic management and uh, hard work of all of our, all of our staff. Um, the business grant program, Joyce, do you know how many BTRs, business tax receipts we have, or Claire? Brian, Brian left. Okay, pushing a, pushing a thousand. The first round of the, the grant program from the county is gonna be $10 million. I think the max is 3,000 you can request. It's gonna be a flat dollar. You can prove that you had at least $3,000 worth of sales or revenue loss. Okay. And then we're gonna give you Okay, so they can help 3,333 people in the first round. And just in our city, one out of 16 cities in the county, we have almost 1,000. But So my point with all that is quick, quick, quick. I don't know why they're involving us in the documentation of it. The money's not coming through us. Uh, we're not being paid additional dollars for staff time or effort. But regardless of that, I hope you will put extra staff on that to, I mean, as soon as that application goes in, if our documentation supporting that, uh, whatever part we're required to do, if you can get it in so our businesses have the best chance possible of... Uh, I appreciate that. The um, reclaimed water issue, Commissioner Selby and Commissioner Kent, I agree, uh, was a great report by staff. They're well aware of the issue, and I get the emails just like each of us do about... Uh, it not being available and people paying for it and looking for a credit and I agree they should get a credit if it's not available. Um, the system is is broken somehow and I don't think that was the intent when we got into it. The, the intent was to help the environment and provide a service. Um, and then I got a note on one of my devices the other day that said extended drought period ahead. So we're looking at a few more weeks of, of drought times. And so, you know, we're supplementing with well water. That goes counter to the whole entire point of the thing, which is to conserve water and use water that would otherwise get discharged to the Halifax. So we're using, you know, I don't know how many gallons of, of raw well water that could be conserved. That's a, that's a problem. Uh, we're giving out credits frequently, which I agree is the right thing to do in that situation, but that's going to end up costing, I don't know how much, tens of thousands into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it's the right thing to do when you've created a system that is dysfunctional. Um, and then, you know, there's an interconnect that will be coming online with Holly Hill, and hopefully that will help the issue. I think the um, storage will be part of the helping with the issue. I'm willing to look at, at meters at some point if we need to. That would probably be closer to the end of my list of, of possible uh, solutions. But, uh, you know, staff is well aware of what the issues are, and I appreciate you continuing to look at it and making sure that we're doing, doing the right thing by our customers and uh, figuring out how to, to get on top of that and maybe you know, before we even talk about any future plans of expansion of that system, we get this figured out, and then uh, if there were additional capacity at some point, we could look at, at moving forward with that. But there's that, a, is it ASR, the, where you inject it into the ground for storage, um, and there's grant money for that pretty frequently. But So there's all kinds of possibilities, but I appreciate staff taking a look at it and uh, 
trying to do trying to do the right thing. Just one little uh, suggestion that I had, and I don't know where the rest of the commission would be on this, but there seems to be a mentality in the emails that I get that people expect to have that 24 seven, they turn that on and just let it run and run and run. That's their water, they pay a flat fee. And I don't think it was presented to them that way, but, but that's the mentality. And so I asked staff if they could put somewhere on the water bill, um, just when, if available, because I think that's, you know, at least helps them understand it may not always be available. So that's something I've suggested you can respond now or talk to Joyce uh, individually about that, but something just to counter that mentality of I'm entitled to it. It should be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever I want it, because I pay 16 bucks a month or whatever the, whatever the fee is. Um, Deputy Mayor Kent, do you want to talk on that one? Yeah, just because you mentioned it. And I, I agree with you completely, Mayor. When I spoke with Joyce uh, during that meeting, I said we need to do a better job of educating um, our residents about this. And, and I, I, I mentioned, I said, so, you know, now that we have these days, I'm going to go to my house and check um, my system because it's automatic. And I know when it's coming on, you know, um, when I'm still sleeping because you don't want this stuff going on during the day, daytime hours, you know, it evaporates. And I went home and checked it and was able to make some adjustments and um, then double checked to make sure that it did come on the two days now that I'm giving myself, even though I don't think we're down to two days yet. And I think that if we educate our residents, and, and I'm with you on that, Mr. Mayor, is the last, to me, the last thing we would do would spend a million dollars um, to, to go out and put meters on, on everybody's house. I really do think that if people know what their days are going to be, the hours, the hours have changed completely as well. And, and it was never billed as you're just gonna be able to just hook into this and run it as long as you want, whenever you want. We were always still going by the St. John's Water Management District guidelines of the days you could water, how often and how long you could water. So I like everything that you're saying about that. And I think the last thing we, ne we can do if we need to do it is, is put meters out, but um, some way to get the word out so that people know when they can water and the new times, because that was pretty powerful too. And I think by doing those things, I think it's, I said you all were great problem solvers. I truly think that is going to solve the problem that we're having because now your two days, you will have water, I think. You just will, but thanks, man. Great, and I agree with Deputy Mayor Kent. If because uh, I've seen it even during this this unusual event that we're in, uh, if people understand why you're doing what you're doing, generally they will comply voluntarily. And if they did that, then meters may not ever be necessary. It's just, we don't, we mention that as a possibility because that's one solution, but it's not, I don't think we are dying to go to that. So, Commissioner Selby. Yeah, I just wanted to point out um, one other consideration, and that is that um, the system is available to most homeowners in the, obviously in the evening hours and overnight. And um, uh, and so I I had to drill down because I have a well, so I didn't I didn't know how this works. And uh, in in a person's garage who has um, uh, reuse, they have a similar. If they have multiple zones, they have a similar distribution system that that I might have with my well. But here's a, there's a couple of problems with that. Number one is they can't really ever test that. They can only test that when the system is providing pressure, providing water to their home. So if they've got a gusher, you know, somebody ran over one of their sprinkler, yard guy or whatever, ran over one of their sprinkler heads, they, they might not even know it. So that, th that thing might be just blowing water. They're not getting any water on their yard. They think they're not getting any water when in, they have a big brown spot, when in reality, maybe it's just a problem with their own system. They might have a broken pipe or a, so that, that's, one, that's one issue. The other thing is that, you know, these systems, are some of them can be kind of complicated you know some of those timer boards you know they're 
they're really not all that. And there's a lot of elderly people that, that think they're not getting any water, but maybe their timer is set for a.m. instead of p.m., you know, when it's not, there is no water to their house at that time. So uh, a suggestion that I made that was, that was, that wasn't real well received by staff was if we, well, I, I don't, I, I just, you know, you didn't jump all over it, okay? I mean, was that maybe there'd be somebody in our utility area who's very, you know, socially gifted, who maybe when somebody calls and complains or lets a, you know, voices a concern to us that maybe goes to that homeowner's house just to kind of make sure that everything's set up the right way, you know, because if the problem's in their garage, we can't do anything about it, you know. Now, the other problem with that is if they do have some broken pipes or a gusher or whatever, that same person would have to come back when, the, I mean, they'd either have to be able to go turn the water on to that zone, which I don't know how they do that, but, or come back at night when the, on the nights when they get water. See what I'm saying? I mean, it's a, there's a big part that the resident has to play in order to make the delivery of this, and they don't control the supply of the reuse to their great, home. Great point, and I thought about that. I said, gosh, when you have, so let's say you, you have a new system being put in, and, and your, your uh, contractor's there, and they put it in, and he's like, all right, I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to adjust the zones. He, he's not going to be able to. I, I thought about that, and then I thought, and homeowners, the same thing. But the times that I saw, it was people are going to have to, to schedule because it was 4 p.m. until 10 a.m. So you could check before you went to bed. You could check when you woke up in the morning just to see. I liked that there was a little bit of leeway. I don't know that that completely solves everything you're talking about, Commissioner, but it made me feel a little bit better about it because, you know, they could check their system starting at 4 p.m. and all the way up until 10 a.m., uh, interesting about having someone go out there um yeah have to have a gifted person for that good discussion thank you for that um and so finally i'll close with uh our numbers i think we're up to 94. Uh, 60 of those are nursing home either staff or residents in well i, th I think in ormond beach the numbers i saw and then there were 10 deaths uh, just in the Opus home alone. So that, that's about 70. If you take 94 minus 70, that leaves the 32174 and 32176 area codes with about 24 cases. And all of those wouldn't necessarily be in the city. Um, so there's, you know, that's consistent with or lower than most of our per capita, most of our sister cities of similar size. Um, I'm concerned about the Opus facility. They've had 10 deaths that we know of. They've apparently sent 12 people back to the hospital and that aren't doing well. So, we need a right. And I don't think we're any different than any place else in the country as far as nursing homes go. It, and in that particular facility, maybe they handle higher risk cases or mm -hmm. something. I don't know. But uh, what I'm concerned about there from a transparency perspective, and this is, you know, something I'd like to look at for our lobbying efforts in the future, is getting the state to allow us to be more detailed and specific, obviously still protecting any HIPAA concerns, but with city limits and uh, with these facilities, the there's so many county areas in 32174 and 32176 that it's not fair to a specific city. Uh, it, makes, it makes their numbers look overinflated. And uh, so that's why I'd like more specifics available uh, from DOH. And that's something that the state would have to do at the legislative level uh, to allow that. And then the second thing that also deals with transparency is that this Opus facility uh, is a very nice looking facility, very clean, uh, professional looking on the outside. And if you did a review of their records, if you're looking for a place to put your loved one, you want the best facility that you can find for them that you can afford. And so a cursory review of those records for this facility, you wouldn't have spotted any problems. This is coming from an expert in the uh, news journal article a few days ago. 
But the problem is from a transparency perspective, uh, they have at that facility a history, multi-year history of poor infection control. And now it seems to be displaying itself during this event in a, in a horrible way. And uh, so I would like to see the Department of Health clean up those transparency standards for all those reports so it's clear when you're looking for some place to put your family member if they have to either rehab or go into long-term care that you can tell this is a decent facility and it checks off all the boxes and you don't have to be either an expert in reviewing the reports or know it's exactly what to have to ask for um, so those are two things I just wanted to point out and there may be more that come up from all of us as we learn and continue to experience this event but I wanted to at least get those out there so uh, with that and being no other comments at 822 we will be adjourned thank you